For many, two broke girls will always hold a special place in their hearts. For others, it was a largely forgettable sitcom that heavily relied on crass humor that all too often fell flat. The series, which was produced by Warner Brothers and aired on CBS, premiered in 2011 and ran for six seasons before being abruptly canceled in 2017. Viewership started out strong. Season 1 was viewed by almost 20 million people. Season 2 onward, however, saw a steady decline in viewership. By Season 6, only 6 million viewers were tuning into the program. That being said, plenty of TV shows with a significantly smaller audience than that managed to be picked up for additional seasons. In this video, we'll be discussing whether it was a matter of creative control, scheduling, or money that brought about the end of this memorable, albeit divisive, sitcom. And we'll be taking a look at the scene that took two broke girls off the air for good. CBS had an overly stocked comedy inventory. CBS's head of scheduling, Kelly Call, was quoted by Deadline in 2017 as saying that while Two Broke Girls was a well-performing show for a long time, the fact that it had been on the air for so long had put a lot of pressure on its producers to keep it fresh. Call went on to explain how CBS began to feel that, creatively speaking, it was about time to create space in their schedule for newer products. Call believes the decision to pull the plug on the show was much more of a creative decision than anything. The series was the work of Warner Brothers. CBS had merely picked it up, and by picking it up, they also had to cover its costs. For the WB, Two Broke Girls was very profitable. It was earning the studio $1.7 million an episode on just TBS alone. For CBS, however, it wasn't nearly as lucrative. And with a full schedule of comedies like Young Sheldon slated to air in the fall, it made more sense to let other offerings take a stab at things than grant another season to a series in decline. The Filthiest Show on Television Two Broke Girls wasn't afraid to lean heavily upon sexual innuendo for its humor. From jokes about the male anatomy and sexual positions, to discussion of porn and masturbation, Two Broke Girls felt more like something you'd see on a subscription channel like HBO than a primetime sitcom. The fact that it aired on a broadcast network in a time slot where the FCC normally prohibits profane speech upset some viewers, who flooded the FCC's website with complaints. Some of these complaints have been published on the governmental transparency website governmentaddict.org. One viewer compared the show to soft porn before expressing how shocked they were to hear the B word used loosely on a primetime show when children could watch. Another disgruntled viewer begged the FCC to, quote, do their job by removing the show and others like it from public broadcasting systems. Reportedly, by 2016, over 100 viewers had filed informal complaints about Two Broke Girls' content, the majority of which cited crude sexual epithets uttered by the main characters. Right out of the gate, Two Broke Girls made no attempt to hold back in terms of sexual content. In the first episode, a diner customer asks Max where his waitress ran off to. The audience then hears a loud scream off-screen, which is implied to be sexual in nature. We later learn that the customer's waitress was indeed having sex in the kitchen. Later, there's a crude joke about a suspicious stain on her uniform. You might be wondering how a show like this got away with boundary-pushing content. Well, even though the scripts were jam-packed full of cutting jokes about sexual acts and crude anatomical references, they were always conveyed through veiled, albeit heavy-handed, innuendo. In a 2012 interview at that year's Television Critics Association Winter Press Tour, one of the show's co-creators, Sex and the City's Michael Patrick King, defended the show by praising its writing for being witty. He went on to say it was a very different world than the 8.30 time slot on CBS back in 1994, and that he considered the jokes on the show to be, as he put it, classy dirty and high lowbrow. While King might have been proud of his creation, the critics weren't nearly as pleased. Beginning with the show's first season, critics took issue with the show's problematic cracks about ethnicity and race. Minority supporting cast members such as Matthew Moy, who played Han the Korean diner owner, were often reduced to stereotypes. Before we tell you more about Two Broke Girls, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already. It ended on a cliffhanger. When Two Broke Girls was cancelled at the end of its sixth season, it left viewers forever in the dark about who Max's mom was. Her mother was set to make her debut in the season 7 debut, but the oft-mentioned but never seen character never got a chance to see screen time. Rumor has it her mom was going to be played by the legendary Turn Back Time singer Cher. Talks had been underway for Cher to guest star on the program when news broke the series would not be coming back for an additional season. 
It makes you wonder what it would have been like for Cher to be in that role. She could have been the perfect pick to play Kat Denning's mother. The singer's style and energy were an excellent match for Max's, and as seen in her previous film roles in movies like Moonstruck, Cher would have been able to bring a lot of emotion to the complex mother-daughter situation alluded to throughout the series. Instead of seeing Max and her mother reunite to work out their differences, the show ended with Max getting engaged and she and Caroline's cupcake shop fund going back down to zero. While that might have been seen as somewhat of a disappointing ending to some, at least the girls found some success as small business owners. In the end, they owned a share of the diner and had a thriving dessert bar, so it wasn't a total loss. It might not have been a total fulfillment of their hopes and dreams, but at least viewers got to see two highly ambitious women achieve a level of professional and personal satisfaction. Many stories left to tell While six seasons is a decent length for any TV series, fans had hoped the show would be picked up by another network to continue its run. As a result, there are countless two broke girls' stories left untold. Not getting a chance to arrive at any real place of resolution with Max and her mother's relationship stands out as being the most frustrating, especially when imagining what it would have been like to see Cher in that role. But it's still abundantly clear that being a part of the show brought a tremendous amount of joy to Bears and Dennings. After it had been announced that Two Broke Girls was officially kaput, the two actresses released a joint statement via Twitter detailing their devotion to their fans and the strong friendship they'd formed during production. While it would have been nice to see Caroline and Max spend another couple seasons chasing down their dreams together, it would still be nice to see where Bears and Denning's careers end up taking them. Denning most recently played the character Darcy Lewis in Disney Plus's 2021 Marvel miniseries WandaVision. Since 2018, Beth Bears has played Gemma Johnson on CBS's The Neighborhood. Now it's time to hear from you. Were you a fan of Two Broke Girls, or did you think it was too raunchy for its own good? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.